Hi explorers. So earlier when we were over by the Crawfish River, we saw our first evidence of a stockade and we were having some wanderings. As we're walking here, we've come up along this informational sign that tells us some more detailed description of what a stockade is. So let's kind of take a look. As you can see, I'm standing right behind one and it's right here, really tall. And the sign is telling me that over 7,000 of these posts had been put into the ground vertically. They think that people probably put these in in the spring because the ground was nice and soft and it was easier to build. As they were building, they used willow trees and other branches to help make it. And they wove in between different clay and brush to help plaster it to keep it nice and thick and secure. As I look, it's also giving me the formal definition right here of a stockade. And it says that it's a high wall or fence that's surrounding an inner area. Stockades serve a variety of purposes. It could be for protection. It could be to control entry and to distinguish public uses versus private areas. Right now I'm standing in this square enclosure here. So as you can see, And as we're walking, we notice that they're throughout this stockade and it looks like they're at different intervals. Some people think that it resembles a watchtower, but we're not sure. It's again, one of those mysteries of this land that we just don't know. And again, here you can see the intervals of these square enclosures. So there's one right here one a little farther back, then another one, and then the one that I'm standing in right now. Again, it's one of those mysteries we just don't know. We can infer of what this could be. Again, there's the stockade. Again, you can clearly see those square enclosures that are thought to maybe have been watchtowers, but we're still not sure. And there's one, two, three, four of them that I can see right there. Hi explorers. So we just came up upon another informational sign here and it's talking and telling us about the homes that the people lived in when they were here in Aslan, um, this site. So here it's telling us that they lived in what's called, they call it the roundhouse type, which means that it had a circular shape to it and a circular floor, and it could have had different types of walls. Some of the walls had animal skins, it had um, tree branches, and others were some more similar to the stockade um, walls that we have seen and it was enc encased with that clay and that mud to keep it insulated. Right behind me is where they would have been placed. And when I turn around, their homes would have been facing the Crawfish River. So many important clues and evidence that archeologists have found telling us that this is where they lived and that this is where their homes were. So here's more of that sign that's telling us about the house structures here at this site. And this image right here is showing what the map might have looked like. So here is the boundaries. This would be the stockade that we've seen that goes all the way around. This green part, this is the residential area that we're looking at. This is where they would have lived. So if we look, this is the green area that we were just seeing on the map. This is where they lived. And when I look at this um, sign again, I see that they have some artwork here depicting what the houses might have looked like. And this image comes from the Kenosha Public Museum and the artist is Rob Evans. You can see how the houses aren't really in a line. They're just kind of grouped together. Again, the round houses here, we can see people cooking outside. Inside the houses, 
There was evidence that there were pole frame beds, probably covered with boughs from trees, deer skins, furs. There were fireplaces located in the center of the house. And each house, each one of these round houses had a hole at the top to let the smoke out. And in that artwork, I can see the smoke coming out. The family stored food such as corn, nuts, and different seeds in woven bags, which they kept in pits, in large pits that they dug, which were inside their homes. And when they cooked outside, that is where they had their perishables outside by the fires. And you can see that in the images in this artwork. The Science Explorers is really helpful and it helps me understand as I was talking about earlier as we were walking and I was trying to think about and be able to visualize what I would be seeing if I was here around the time that these people that were living here were. It's so helpful to help me visualize and understand where things would have been.